Well, since I did the vlog number one, uh, we've had a lot of changes. So I thought I'd come out and show you a couple of things. First of all, uh, we put in a new septic finger system that kind of goes out there through the woods. And, um, but we haven't done a lot to it. We're gonna let it settle. Um, we need to get a cut, you know, some rain. Uh, a little bit of rain would be nice. And, uh, you know, with some rain, then maybe we can get that to settle and we'll level this off and this will be ready for um, maybe some garden area and uh, whatnot. But again, like I mentioned last time that uh, Jared Stanley is going to be helping us with a permaculture design. And once we get that all set up uh, and we do that series, which is going to be a video series released on a World for Change TV, um, then de uh, definitely then we'll know a little bit more what direction we're going to go and how we're going to design all of this property here that uh, that is Jerry's. So uh, that's the first thing. Second thing I thought we'd show you would be uh, the uh, uh, wicking garden beds. And I don't know if you were able to catch that over the last uh, week, I think. I uploaded a couple videos, and one of them was the wicking garden beds. And you can see they're doing pretty darn good. Uh, we've had a couple of warm days here over the last couple days um, after a cool snap. And you can see that Malabar spinach is just taking off like crazy. Um, and doing well so uh, we're gonna have peppers within the next oh I'd say another two weeks we're gonna have peppers um, we've got a green pepper back here in the back and you can see you know what happens when you trim the pepper back as uh, drastic as what we did we trimmed it back to right here you can see where we trimmed it it sprouted and it took off and now uh, we're having uh, getting a second wave of peppers right there's a pepper um, we're getting a second wave of peppers um, and we should be able to keep this thing producing throughout the winter if we get it covered up in, in, in a greenhouse or uh, covered up appropriately we should be able to keep it producing or at least alive so that's the goal uh, the cold frames have been working on the cold frames and um, <clears throat> these things are made out of recycled uh, um, Warner ladder rails, and we've got a, a stack of them right back over there. But uh, these recycled Warner ladder rails are just an incredible um, building material. And we're reusing some old tin uh, that's really nice. The nice thing about this tin is uh, once it rusts and it oxidizes like that, then you don't have to paint it. That oxidation, it's, it's a good old tin that's good quality. And that oxidation um, uh, keeps you from uh, having to paint it, and it protects it from rusting all the way through. And it'll last a lot longer than the tin would be today if I would have went out and purchased tin from Lowe's or, you know, Home Depot. So, so I've been working on these cold frames just off and on. When I get some time, I'll work on them over the um, over the course of the evenings. And last weekend, I put a little time into them. And uh, I'm getting them ready to do a video series, uh, and I'll shoot that this weekend, and then we'll release it on the personal YouTube channel. So right here on YouTube. So I uh, uh, hope you'll you'll enjoy that. So as you can see, I'm not just doing gardening projects and building cold frames, but I'm also playing Grease Monkey a little bit today too. So I thought I'd throw this in with you. We're um, uh, trying to get this old trencher running. It's a Case Davis Fleet Line 30 by 4. Um, so I'm guessing that means it's 30 horsepower. I don't know. 30 horsepower seems like an awful large engine. This is a uh, yeah, it's a four-cylinder V-twin uh, Kohler, I think, right? That's right. Uh, so this is Jerry's, and it's he co-owns it with Steve, and, and we're just you know, trying to get it running. So uh, I rebuilt the carburetor a couple days ago, and. Uh, we uh, went to try to, to get it to fire and the starter was froze up so we cleaned the starter off and you know after that uh, we're going to get to see if this thing will fire up so we'll bring you along let's see, let's see try it. i think that'll work better so we still don't really know if this thing's going to fire up they think uh, when they parked it a couple of years ago that it was starting to have an engine knock and to get the starter out we had to pull the air cleaner off so I've already pulled the air cleaner off I've serviced the air cleaner um, 
I've checked the oil, and the only thing left to do here is to uh, add some gasoline to this thing and try to fire it up. So Jerry, he went back over to our place to get the get the truck to jump it and get some gasoline. Um, we're going to see if this thing will fire up. Here's where it's going to go. Okay, you ready? Yep. Nope, didn't go. You're right. Before I go, um, the worms in my Red Wiggler worm bin, here's the Alabama jumpers, and they're doing fine. They're really uh, breeding. They're doing well. They're repopulating, and that's they're doing much better than I expected. I figured, I think I figured them out, and I'll share with you that in a later video, but my question is, what the heck am I supposed to feed these things? I mean, I've given them everything that I can. Here's some leftover, you know, prep <laughs> survival food that went bad that, I'm, that I've been, you know, putting in. But what do you guys use as a base, especially the guys who are doing this more um, on a commercial basis? Um, what do you use for a base of your... Um, your bedding for your worms and something that's you know that's hopefully more natural that i can get for free or very cheap i don't really feel like going out and buying a bunch of um uh, peat moss or cocoa core because i don't feel like that's very sustainable and uh, it's just my opinion so what do i do go out into the woods and just get a bunch of crud start throwing it in and uh, feeding them like what i'm doing the um, alabama jumpers the challenge with that is you're going to have a lot uh, less uniformity in the um in the worm castings and that's my biggest concern so well hey if you got any ideas there uh toss me a note and uh, let me know what you do about it we'll talk to you all soon god bless